Hey there! In today's video, we are going to understand about science process skills and why they are important to us. Now, whenever we talk about science, we often think of laboratories, scientists and inventions. And one of the greatest inventions is undoubtedly that of the light bulb created by Thomas Alva Edison. But did you know that there were so many other scientists who had made tiny contributions that helped Edison to develop the light bulb? Now, just like Edison, there are so many scientists who have made major contributions in different fields that has changed our lives. But what is one thing that is common amongst all of them? Every breakthrough began with a question where someone asked why or how and then decided to probe deeper. That simple spark of curiosity lies at the heart of every discovery. So evidently, scientists have the ability to turn questions into answers. But how can they do that? Because some questions are not easy to answer. Well, that is where they need certain tools that would help them and guide them to arrive at the answer. And that is simply what we call as a process skill, which includes thinking tools that we're able to use in order to explore questions, collect information and arrive at a particular answer. And these tools include using observation by measuring and gathering data, by making models and by hypothesis testing. Now, not to get overwhelmed by looking at it all at once. So, which is why we're going to look at it one by one, where we can see how by making observations, we're able to arrive at an answer. So, let's take the example of a marine biologist. So, we have a marine biologist who goes exploring underwater to look at coral reefs and she has an underwater camera with her. Now, she takes a couple of pictures of corals and she notices that there are some corals which are bright and vibrant colored, some which were looking very pale and some which were white, almost bleached. Now she makes all these observations and arrives at the fact that there are three types of corals. There are healthy corals, distressed corals and bleached corals. Now what did she just do? Well, the first thing she did was observe where she gathered information by using senses. So in this particular case, she's taken pictures of corals and she's observed the colors and she's looked at the textures. And based on that, she has gathered some information. Now with this information, she has then gathered similarities and she's looked at the differences. So that is now she that is where she's comparing her information. So that is where we write down the points like there are some corals which are bright colored, some which are pale. And based on this, you then classify where you group or organize these organisms based on the specific characteristics. So that is where we arrive at this in the end. So this is where you can use observation in order to arrive at certain answers. And this is a very common technique which is very popularly used in biology. Now, this is all about observation. Now, next up, we have by measuring and gathering data. Now, let's take an example of a student who is tracking daily rainfall during the monsoon, which means she will have to collect rainfall every day and then measure it using a measuring cylinder. So, what she does at this very step is actually collect information. And here, this information is in the form of a numeric value where it is in terms of maybe millimeters, it is in terms of centimeters, right? But there's a numerical value associated. And once gathered, she'll make a record of it where she will write the observations down. Now, with this observation, she can actually maybe make a chart. And after making this chart, maybe she could identify which week had the highest rainfall. So therefore, in this particular case, she is able to analyze information from the chart she makes. And as a matter of fact, this technique is largely used in meteorological departments to help us understand weather and climate. So this is all about measuring and gathering data. Now, next up is by making models. And this is again a, th uh, a technique that is very popularly used in biology. 
So let's take an example where in order to understand how much oxygen a plant produces, a student is building a terrarium, which is basically an artificial environment for the plants to grow. And to this terrarium, she connects an oxygen sensor so that from this she actually gets to know how much oxygen gets produced. So effectively, by making the model, she is able to understand the idea of photosynthesis because it's not something you can e easily visualize. And often, especially with respect to human body, when you want to understand how certain parts work, models are the best way to go. So in this case, it is to understand the idea of photosynthesis. And in this case, she predicts, right, which means forms an idea or, you know, gets an expectation that oxygen levels should ideally be higher during the day than in the night. So this is something based on observations or experience experiences that are there. So from this, what she does, she then starts to look at the oxygen sensor and she makes a note of it and finally infers that during the noon time, you see that more oxygen is being released out from the plant, while during the night, it is relatively very less. So therefore, by using models, you can explain or understand how certain processes happen. Now, the next and the last methodology that we're going to look at is hypothesis testing. Now, to understand this, we should first know what a hypothesis is. See, basically, hypothesis is an assumption that is made on some evidence or some fact that is there. For example, we know that sugar will dissolve in water, right? So, if I take a spoon of sugar and dissolve it in water, I will get a solution. Now, what if I say that maybe sugar will dissolve faster in hot water than in cold water? Now, this is a hypothesis or a statement I am making. Now, either this can be true or it can be false. Now, in order to know whether the statement I'm making is true or false, I will probably need to plan and conduct an experiment. So maybe here I will take, you know, five grams of sugar, right? So I'll take five grams of sugar. I'll take about 200 ml of water and of different temperatures and I will mix it. And after this, I will then time and see what has taken lesser time and what has taken more amount of time. And then I will record all of my information. Now, it is important that the variables here. So what are the variables? How much sugar I'm adding? How much water I'm adding? Right? What is the speed at which I'm mixing it? And what is the intensity? Right? These are all certain variables. Now, I need to make sure that I control my variables. Right? And then finally arrive at my data. So finally, whatever I get, I will analyze it and then I will say, okay, it dissolves faster in warm water rather than cold water, right? So effectively, we have made a statement about an expected outcome, made an experiment around it, and then identified what the results could, what are the results and interpreted it. Now, this is also very popularly used across different fields of science. And effectively, by creating a hypothesis, we are able to come up to new answers as well. So from this, if you look at it, we've had a basic understanding of what are science process skills, and we've looked at the different types of it. 